views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Get fired up for Spirit Fire Radio with your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Get ready to shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in these modern times. Bring purpose to your life through practical spirituality and add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Now, here are your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio and our third season. It's very exciting to be with you and very exciting to be with Dr. Dorothy Riddle again. Hey, Dorothy, are you out there? I'm here, Steve. I'm looking forward to this new season. Wonderful. How great to be connected. I've missed you. Me too. (laughs) So listeners, just in case you're joining us for the first time, it's been a few months. We took a bit of a break between season two and season three, and it's just great to be back on board. So Dorothy, let's let's uh, let's go right in and and talk a little bit about this season. I'm I'm really excited because we sort of we've shifted a little bit our our theme, or I'd say we we've expanded it and we've moved on. So last season. I feel like we took these spiritual principles and we talked to everybody about ways that spiritual principles can be expressed in our everyday lives. And wow, we covered such amazing topics like right speech, right action, uh, hope, compassion, forgiveness. The list goes on. All of these these tools that that people could use in their everyday lives. And I feel like this season we, we're moving on. We're sort of like zooming out to these principles that affect our whole reality. It's kind of like we showed people how to drive a car, we gave them the tools to drive the car, and now we're gonna go under the hood and sort of explore what is a car itself. (laughs) (laughs) That's a very interesting analogy, Steve. And I I think I'd like to raise uh, a quote that I know we've used before, but I think it, it, really encapsulates uh, what we're planning for this year. And that's uh, Pierre Desjardins' uh, quote, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, but spiritual beings having a human experience. And it's that relationship between who we really are as spiritual beings or ensouled beings or however people, whatever language people want to use for that, and the physical constitution that we usually imagine ourselves to be. Mm, we, we certainly use that quote quite a bit. It, it was so useful because it, there's so much truth behind it that I think anybody who hears it for the first time or is reminded of it, it really resonates on a very deep level, right? And it sort of, mm-hmm. it, it, it asks us, you know, what is a human being? You know, and what is a spiritual experience or what is spirit itself, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it, it leads us to, I, I think, what's going to color all of our, um, all of our shows this year. Uh, it leads us to the fact that we are more than just our individual body. In other words, we don't end at the limits of our of our physical self. We are more than that. And today we're going to beginning that, begin that conversation about how we are uh, literally connected to everything in our cosmos. And Steve, one of the things that I find so fascinating is that for years, uh, metaphysics has been talking about, you know, energy and the spiritual and I have a friend that calls this all woo-woo stuff, but quantum physics has actually demonstrated scientifically that we are all literally part of a gigantic cosmic energy field. 
I think that's fascinating. Well, and it's no small coincidence that just about every spiritual leader with us today who's teaching and creating is writing a book with a, a quantum physicist or writing a book with a scientist. It seems that we're really trying to bridge this gap that seems to have been, I, I don't know, almost inserted between science and religion. And interestingly enough, Dorothy, I, I, as I say that, I realize that that comes basically down to those minds that were the leaders in science until until recently. You know, you think of Descartes and you think of Newton that that were really basically saying, if you can't see it, it's not real. You know that that's right. That really we live in this physical universe and it's predictable, and that if you know the material world is the result of these laws and affected by them, but you know, we've learned that from our perspective down here, as we expand our perspective, those laws are not always so predictable. And then Einstein came along and basically said, uh, no, actually, there's not a division, which was the division was the material world and the rest was all up to God. <laughs> and Einstein said, well, maybe not so much. We might be a little more involved. It might, there might be a little bit more of unity than you think. And as he expanded our ideas of, of what is the what is the world around us and how does it work, we saw that it got a little bit unpredictable, right? <laughs> well, that's true. And what, for our listeners, and I'm sure we'll co keep coming back to this, the one of the primary contributions of, uh, of quantum physics, not to get into the, you know, the nitty gritty of the science, but is to help us understand that rather than living in a predictable universe like uh, Newton described, we live in a probabilistic universe. And that is, that's the fundamental shift that we need to make. And when you have a probabilistic universe, what that means is that our own actions, how we interact with the overall energy field, uh, affects the outcome. It affects what actually happens. And I think next month we're going to spend uh, quite a bit of time on that principle of participation, what, you know, what happens as we participate. But this month we want to be talking about that principle of interconnection. What does it mean that we really are all connected to each other? Right. And I look forward to next week because we're really going to dive into, in a sense, the science there, because we're going to for sure next week talk about the observer effect, which is so important to quantum physics. And for those of you who hear that word quantum physics and your mind just goes, oh, no, that's so abstract. I don't want to go there. It really is quite it can be reduced to something quite um, inspiring and energizing because it it basically comes down to this other principle that we talked about consistently all last year, which was that energy follows thought. And then energy following thought really leads to this idea that we create our own reality. So when we put all of those together and then we, we add this principle that we're all interconnected, we realize that if we are creating a reality that works against interconnectivity, in other words, if we're creating a ra reality that fosters separativeness, we're actually working against the principles of the universe. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be very careful with that. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's why this month is really going to be this a bit of, you know, under the hood of the car, because as we get to understand this principle, of interconnectivity, we can see, you know, are we working for it or are we working against it? You know, what are our actions displaying and how is that creating our own reality? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and so that takes us to the, the basic idea that we're going to be focused on this month, that we are all part of whatever you want to call it, but uh, a common term is one life. We are all part of one life. And I want to uh, hasten to add that that means not just humans. That's that's everybody. That's the whole uh, the whole cosmos is alive, and we are part of all of that. Um, 
And just as our organs form part of our body, uh, we and the earth and other entities all form part of this one life that is the cosmos. Well, and Dorothy, not to not to be the devil's advocate, but I, what I, what I think is so interesting, if we really look at everything as fractal, right, is that everything is a representation of the next bigger thing. Like we can mm-hmm. look at a cell, we can look at our solar system, we can look at the universe, and all of these systems look and act in the same way. So there are these principles that, or this display, at least of the material world, that as we expand out, what is our sort of what do we call the material world or what do we call that which we can recognize because sometimes energy isn't just what we actually see in front of us but in terms of the way that energy manifests into a form of some sort it all works in the same way so what i find interesting is when we talk about the one life we're we're sort of at some point we're we're creating a container and we're saying well we are within this container and we've got to as human beings and especially as spiritual beings understand that we are a part of a greater whole. But as we look at even like chain physics and quantum entanglement, we get to this like idea of string theory, which is that there are many, many, many one lives. So it's as if we almost even need to be careful to say the one life as if it ends there, because if it's fractal, it even just goes on beyond that, right? In a sort of a beautiful way. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I need to put one kind of final boundary around the one life just to have it make sense to me. So I think sure, of one sure, life sure. With, in ca- with capital letters, capital O, capital mm-hmm. L, everything. And, it, it, you know, because we talk about multi-universes, uh, or multiverses, uh, that it's not just one universe. But there is something that is, there is some boundary that that exists. Uh, that contains that energy field, and I really like that image, Steve, of of the container. Because if we think about some of the issues that are going on in our world today, we could describe them as uh, our creating very limited containers and saying this is the only container that is okay. Mm-hmm. And we do that based on religion. We do it based on ethnicity, we do it based on um, you know, political beliefs or whatever, and we forget that we're just one small piece of everything. Right, that my, it's the my container thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is my container. I think it's interesting, we're going to go to a break in just a sec, but it's interesting that, that Descartes, to go back to Descartes, that he, he sort of had, he was in the right path, you know, it, has any has everybody heard? I think, therefore, I am. You know, he mm-hmm. he sort of brought this. He said this was basically the first principle of philosophy, which is this energy follows thought. But where he went wrong was the I part, right? It's mm-hmm. one thinks, therefore, that which they think becomes reality. It's this I think, therefore, I mm-hmm. am, and that's where we get that container that's separate, that it's all about me. So, Dorothy, we're going to go to a break and. Listeners, we'll be right back after these words. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. 
Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. Have you ever lost your way while driving somewhere? This can be unsettling as you don't know if you should go left, right, forward, backwards, or make a U-turn. Hi, I'm Eve from Elite Tarot, host of the weekly show Mainstream Metaphysics Radio, where we harness the power of the universe for happier living. As an intuitive coach and professional tarot card reader, I work with clients worldwide on helping them get back on their natural road of living their life with joy. Next time you feel off track, tap into your inner child's sense of joy and write down on paper the non-negotiable qualities that you're needing in career or love, but without limiting specifics. With your list, you know where to place your energy going forward and where not to. You're always best served when your inner child is at the navigation controls. However, don't worry, you still have the keys to the car. If you would like to schedule a personal navigation session with me, please visit my website at EliteTarot.com. That's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? (laughs) Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Hello, welcome back, listeners. It's great to be with you for our first show. Dorothy, it's so exciting. Our first show of a whole new year. So we once again have brought our two organizations together in this collaboration that is Spirit Fire Radio. So Dorothy, you want to tell listeners just a little bit about the organization that you are representing in this creative endeavor? Sure. Uh, so I am with the School for Esoteric Studies, which provides uh, discipleship training for persons who want to deepen a spiritual practice and uh, focus on meditation, study, uh, leading to service. Um, and we, several years ago, started an initiative which we call, um, it's a collaboration initiative, and we were looking for other like-minded organizations to collaborate with, and we found Spirit Fire. And so we are together doing this program as a collaboration. You can find out more about the School for Esoteric Studies at esotericstudies.net. Wonderful. Yes, a great website, listeners. There's so much valuable information on that website. I I go to it quite often myself. (laughs) And I am here on behalf of Spirit Fire. You can certainly find more about Spirit Fire at spiritfire.com. And also find our archives if you would like to listen to last year's shows. Uh, If there's a topic that comes up, you can find the archives by going to spiritfireradio.com or, of course, Transformation Talk Radio. Um, Dorothy, I love that you mentioned study, meditation, and service because Spirit Fire uh, is an, essentially an esoteric uh, organization. We uh, endeavor to show ways or, or allow for ways that spirituality can become practical, that you can use it in your everyday life. And we do this with our own meditation practice, with a retreat center. Um, So meditation, study, and service are very important to us. And I I was pondering that before the show, even Dorothy. I was thinking about this idea of of the car that we've we've taught people how to, you you know, drive a car. We gave them the tools. We said, here are some very particular ingredients to the spiritual life or really the life of the path, which is just like being out there and living the life. And we talked about that all last season with these really, really amazing topics, compassion, wisdom. It all goes, you know, all of these ways to sort of drive this vehicle that is spiritual in nature, but the vehicle itself is a human being. And so three ways that, you know, we get to know 
uh, or deep in our relationship to spirituality are meditation, study, and service. And if you think about that in terms of this car, getting under the hood of a car, how would you get to know a car, right? You'd study, you'd buy a bunch of books on cars. You have people who've dedicated a lot of time to organizing information on cars. So if you're gonna drive a car and you wanna get to know it, well, read about it, utilize their knowledge. So study is a really important aspect of expanding our mind and utilizing those who came come before us and really put down information that we can use. So teachers are very important. Meditation, so not only do you need to ponder and contemplate the information you read, which meditating on it would certainly facilitate, but you need to observe cars from a wider perspective. So you kind of need to get outside of your own car to see it in its fullness, right? Perhaps watch other cars on the road. And I guarantee now that you're driving one, you'll look at them differently. So undoubtedly by meditating on or observing, you will sort of examine the nature of a car. So at any time we meditate, we're refining our ability to observe. So we're doing other things with meditation for sure, but that's the basis. We're getting out of our small mind of this mind that just creates thoughts and data, and we're starting to observe, and that's really important in a spiritual process, meditation, observing, contemplating, getting to that point in the mind where we can see the whole picture right? And then service. It means you got to take your car out for a drive. You got to go on lots of drives in the snow, in the rain, on the highway, off road, in traffic, in the parking lot. You got to use it, you know, and then we learn about it. So service means putting ourselves out there. Service in terms of being with other human beings in terms of the spiritual path. It means you got to use it or you lose it. You know, you have to be out there in it. You won't evolve from being in the cave. It's like why the Buddha came out from under the Bodhi tree. He went back to immersing himself among people. So if we isolate ourselves, you know, we, we really won't um, learn the fullness of this spiritual being that is in human expression. And so I just th wanted to take the time to talk about how important that those three, you know, study, meditation, and service are. And I know we won't really go deep into them, consistently, but I just felt it was worthwhile because both of our organizations use those and put them into practice. Absolutely. I'd like to add to that, Steve, because we're talking about the the interconnectedness, the energy that links all of us. Uh, to me, there's another very important function of, uh, of meditation and, and perhaps one of the fundamental ones, and that is to uh, uh, to develop the ability to be in the flow without distorting the energy flow, uh, without beautiful. stopping the energy fl flow. So we, yes. we learn through the practice of meditation to be to channel energy, to receive energy, and to have it flow in a in a pure form through us, which is. Very, very important if we think about the fact that we are actually all linked to each other and how we behave or, or how we relate to that energy is absolutely critical. Dorothy, can I just add to that? Because I just find it so juicy. I love the way you said that about being in the flow, because does that not also happen when we're in service? You know, when we put ourselves out there and I love, you know, when we think of service, also this idea of of, of sacrifice in terms of making something sacred, that it is by being out there and it is by utilizing it that we realize the, the sort of sacred nature of it. And we need to get out there so that we clear the distortions as well of our relationship. You know, how do we connect to other people? What presents itself? And how can we make that flow of immersing ourselves in and around other human beings so that the ways in which we are interconnected reveal themselves without distortion. And the same with knowledge. You know, when we expand our mind, in a sense, we're flowing information from on high or from another place through ourselves so that we can then express it to others. So again, it, all three of those work with energy as a building block and with a flow, right? Absolutely. Uh, and I would like to add one other element, which is the, what throws us off our game, so to speak, what creates the distortion, is when the focus is on me. Yeah, for sure. It's, you know, if we think of service as 
you know, I'm I'm the I'm the best volunteer. You know, I'm the one that's giving. It, no, it's about living the fact that we are all interconnected. And I think one of the I mean, my primary discipline that I was trained in was psychology, and I think that uh, classical psychology um, created some uh, some misconceptions because the emphasis a lot was on moving from being dependent to being independent. You know that you, you grow up, you become an adult, you take care of yourself. Uh, <laughs> whereas actually we need to move beyond that to interdependence, right? Yes. Where we understand our connection to other people and we live out that connection rather than than closing off the boundary. Some spiritual traditions teach that the primary um, problem that humans contribute, I would put this right along with uh, climate change issues, uh, is that we close off the energy circle. We take, yes. but we don't give back. Yes, yes, indeed. And, oh. uh, and we need to be thinking of ourselves as part of a flow of energy that uh, goes out, comes back in, goes out without distortion. A couple things just arose, which just makes me laugh. If you ever want to see a room go cold, I teach meditation at, <laughs> at the retreat center. Mention the word interdependence and just for a moment, leave the word inter off and just talk about the ways in which we are dependent upon each other. Oh my gosh, the room just goes cold. And it shows how much, as you meant, you say that psychology really drilled this into us, that it's, it's not about being dependent. It's, you know, codependent no more, right? That was the book of right. the century. And we trained ourselves to say, oh, I've got to be self-sufficient. You know, I've got to be okay by myself. I'm okay, you're okay. Yes, indeed. But where that leads us then is back to group, is back to ways in which I can use my okayness <laughs> for the greater good of everybody else, right? That's right, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, I also think of uh, silent retreats. You know, we have some groups at the retreat center where, that will do silent retreats where really it's the, the, the goal is to go inward. And for many people, that that means not just being the observer, but it means sort of blocking everything else out and blocking everybody else out. And boy, you should see the way they struggle when they think that being in silence or going inward means nothing else exists. It doesn't work. And they have so much, you know, they have to shift this to being um, about it being expanding and including, but not necessarily being of it at all times. I mean, those are kind of all loose terms, but it just shows that if we really try to separate ourselves in any situation, we feel that. We feel the coldness of it. We feel that mm -hmm. it, in the long run, it won't work, right? Exactly. And if we think about the difficulties, whether they're racial tensions or, or uh, you know, other forms of of uh, hate relations, it all comes down to the separation. You know, I'm okay, you're not okay, and I can only be okay if I make you not okay. You know, that yes. contrast, as, yes. part of, as opposed to recognizing that we are, you know, whoever you are, however you experience the world, I need to understand that because I am con connected to you. I may not like you, I may not... I may disagree with you, but I am energetically connected to you. Yes. And, you know, we, we said it before this, this concept that runs through every spiritual tradition, which is, you know, do unto others as you would have do on, you know, as you would have them do unto you, which is this basic fact that what you put out there returns to you. And it shows that we are all connected and that our actions actually means something that energy is a you know energy it is it reports we are transmitters translators and receivers of energy dorothy we're already at a break again so uh, okay. listeners we'll be right back after these messages Curious about the meaning of life? Do you want to deepen your spiritual practice? 
The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. The school also organizes group meditations each year to benefit humanity. Whether you're just beginning to reflect on the spiritual side of your life or are a more experienced spiritual seeker, the school warmly welcomes you to join our group. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit esotericstudies.net. That's esotericstudies.net. To find answers to life's questions, you need to look within yourself. Dr. Glenna Rice brings your questionable conversations on Transformation Talk Radio each month. Tune in each month for insight into how you can live up to your full potential. Dr. Glenna is a physical therapist, certified access consciousness, and access body class facilitator. How does it get any better than this? For more information on Dr. Glenna Rice and her work, visit GlennaRice.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. You, yes, you, can be the highest version of yourself. Wellness coach and natural beauty expert Dr. Agnes Renkel is on a mission to help you play the game of your life. Win in vibrancy, health, and beauty because you deserve it. Dr. Agnes goes beyond the limits in her personal coaching sessions to revolutionize health and wellness. Now is the time to unleash your true power. For more information, visit dragnesfrankel.com. Welcome back, listeners. It is so great, Dorothy. I'm just once again have to say I'm just so excited about this year ahead. I just know we are going to cover so much amazing ground. And um, I know I personally am going to uh, learn so much from our exchange. So listeners, I hope that is the same for you. Uh, Dorothy, before we went, I, I talked about this point that, that came up quite a bit um, last year about sort of do unto others as they would do unto you, that this is this is, this is the basis of basically every spiritual tradition. It's contained within every spiritual tradition. And it, it makes me think about these, these, these principles that are both in our spiritual world and in our physical world, like expansion and contraction, circulation and cycles, attraction and resistance, all of these sort of things we could talk about in terms of physics and energy we can talk about in terms of spirituality. It's this idea that the, the micro is the macro and the macro is the micro. And that as we talk about our interpersonal relationships, we're also talking about the relationship of all things, right? That, that we are a cosmos in and of ourselves, right? That's right. And the cosmos itself, um, although I know there are disbelievers out there, is alive. It is sentient. It, uh, people call it Gaia in referring to it that way. Uh, but this is not, again, just a kind of woo-woo thought. In People may not be aware that in 2001, uh, 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1,500 scientists issued the Amsterdam Declaration on Global Change. And they came from over 100 countries. And the, uh, the declaration asserted the... Earth system behaves as a single, 
self-regulating system comprised of physical, chemical, biological, and human components. The interactions and feedbacks between the component parts are complex and exhibit multi-scale temporal and spatial variability. And basically what they were saying is Gaia is alive in terms of how we define life, you know, that Gaia has a wide range of living organisms uh, within it. Uh, it's able to uh, demonstrate an incredible control system that we often overlook uh, because, you know, we busily pollute the earth when we pollute the air, and yet Gaia is able to keep the atmosphere at a constant composition and the oceans add a salinity or saltiness that will support marine life, despite what we do. Now, we can do too much. We can drive it beyond its boundaries. Um, and one of the things that we as humans tend to forget is that Gaia or Earth can sustain itself and continue on with us or without us. It's really <laughs> yes. our choice as to whether we're going to be part of the system. Well, and, and you think just at sometimes just how big our egos are, right? We get, and, and, you know, we live in a material world, you know, we, we are, we, we are with our boundaries to our physical material selves, you know, we have a body, it's separate, but goodness gracious to think, you know, that the universe itself is Dorothy, what, like it's, I, I, we've heard, you know, approximately 14 million billion up to 16 billion years old billion years old and complex life on earth as we can trace it in ourselves with what we've got available to us has existed on earth complex life for 400 million years so that's a fraction of the age of the universe and human beings ourselves we've only developed industrialized civilizations in the past 300 years. So it just gives you a perspective that we're kind of a blip, you know? <laughs> and you sort of think that the earth is a part of this bigger system, but you've got it, that then says we are a part of this system that is the earth. And I just think of that, always think of that documentary, Planetary, where they talk to astronauts who, and, and ask them their first impression when they actually saw the earth from outer space. And all of them said that they saw it as a living thing, that it was this, you know, as if we would look at a bumblebee, right? <laughs> it's this right. living, self-contained thing. And some of them even had this sort of epiphany and this spiritual realization where I would just say this, uh, well, this very uh, truthful realization that as a person, as a human being looking back at the earth, that they realize that the, the, themselves, humanity is a product of the earth, that the earth grew us. We came out of the earth. We are made of the stuff of earth. And they even had this sort of revelation that, is it, could it be so that the earth is even beyond these material things that, that they even talk about in the, this Amsterdam statement, that the earth actually has got an emotional body, a mental body, that it actually could have created human beings so as to uh, give, they would create the technology to move off the earth and take a look back at it to see it from the observer mind. That in a way we, in a sense, represent or have the capacity to be the mind of the earth, to observe it from the outside and maybe tap into a greater sort of spiritual realization of the direction that the earth should or could, or at very least, have reverence for where the earth is going. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And in fact, there are, there are countries, unfortunately not North American countries, but um, Brazil and, uh, I'm sorry, Bolivia and Ecuador have taken steps to um, weave this into their constitution. Uh, uh, Bolivia has a, a ministry of Mother Earth and... Uh, and then we have the other components of the earth. We, uh, Switzerland has been uh, at the forefront of um, creating laws on the rights of not just animals, but the rights of plants uh, as sentient uh, social beings. Uh, we have a river in New Zealand that has been declared a living entity. 
uh, a lot of work being done on what's called non-human personhood. So it's it's not just. I, I just want to make sure we don't jump from the earth to the human and forget that there's all of the rest of the uh, the components that comprise our earth. Yeah, and and what what you're saying is it's just once again a reflection that or it's it's bringing this topic up again that. We are completely interconnected, and what does that mean? It means that we constantly receive and we constantly give back. It's this expansion and contraction. This give and receive is is essential, and we have to get to know ourselves and get to know what is it that we are receiving and what is it that we are putting out there because it not only has an effect on other human beings it has an effect on every you know really on on every level of awareness on every sort of level of 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 life and so you know what what are we putting out there and and what are we what are we picking up and the you know we tend to and and I know I've been doing this during uh this show, we tend to talk about energy as if it was just a single thing. Uh, but there, there are many different types of energy. I mean, in the physical world, we know that there's thermal energy and chemical energy and electric energy and so on and so forth. Um, and then we can also, I think we'll talk later in the year about other forms of energy that some disciplines call ray energy that, you know, that differentiate the the impact, the effect of that particular energetic vibration. So we live in the context of a huge, if we want to think of it this way, a huge vibrational chamber. It's like a huge symphony going on uh, with things happening at different vibrational levels. <laughs> Nor the, just to, to bring it back to... Uh to you know the our, our our sort of practical experience i just think uh, once again i'm i'm reminded of something you mentioned uh in the last season which was you had said you know we were talking about just giving and receiving and 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 what are we putting out there and you had mentioned just acknowledging somebody you come into contact with by name and how that mm-hmm. can make all the difference um, you know, that if you're at the grocery store and, and somebody's got a name tag and their name is Linda or Dave, say, thanks, Linda, or thanks, Dave. And I just came back from a long conference and, you know, which meant lots of airports and eating at restaurants and travel and coming into contact with lots of strangers who are wearing name tags. And, you know, that simple that that simple uh, exercise has really changed so much. I was tired. I was at at a restaurant and um my server had a name tag and I, I said hello to her by name. And though I was tired, it created a relationship right away. And mm-hmm. we had a very wonderful connection. My meal was really in, enjoyable. There was this consistent exchange between us. And it's interesting. When I left, I left her a really big, nice tip. And not why? Because I could and I wanted to, and it didn't mean much to me, but you know, I know that that little extra will go toward making her day or her week more enjoyable. And it was so effortless for me. Mm-hmm. I could have been tired and I could have easily just sort of drowned out my world with my inertia and chose not to engage, just order and just sit there being tired. But because I chose to engage, I got and I received energy back from her. And you know, she could have thought, well, maybe this person's lack of engagement is something I'm doing because we, we, we have these boundaries that we need to get beyond. So just, we need to be able to, you know, understand how our energy affects others. And it's just this, it sometimes takes very little effort to connect to someone and see what a difference that makes. It just proves that, that really it is a principle. It is a principle of our universe and it will work for us if we work with it. Absolutely. I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the reverse of that, which is that our negative energy can also affect other people. You know, as as you said, if you had sat there tired, kind of disgruntled, uh, a bit irritable, not made any of, any effort to make a positive connection with her, uh, that could very well have affected her. And, and, and the whole she, room, right? That's right. That's right. And we we have sayings like, 
uh, you know, some somebody looks daggers at somebody else. Where <laughs> yeah. you know, it's that negative energy that's literally flowing out. And so the the concept that I want to put out there, and I can't say that I always live by this, but I believe it's very important, is that we are responsible for our own energetic pollution. Mm. And yes. if I can't, uh, it's unrealistic unreal, for me to expect myself to never, ever be tired, never, ever be irritable, never, ever to be in a bad mood. But I don't have to spray that out over everybody else, right? Yes. Uh, I, I need to take responsibility for that. And if our listeners are not familiar with the concept of shielding, I just want to take a moment to describe that. Hey, Dorothy, can we, can we can we do that as soon as we go to a break? We're actually, we actually need right to go to break. a break. Okay. Yeah, so that'll be perfect. Let's come back and talk a little bit more about responsibility and, and shielding. Sounds great. But we'll be right back after these words. to Knowledge Rook Radio with host Marge Potasic each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Through many experiences, Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity in its transition to the Golden Age, and it provided the truth and the answers. She now shares information from the Knowledge Book with you each week on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit USA.TheKnowledgeBook.net. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. Choose the New Earth on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Ignite your inner magic on Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Jane Matanga explores how to overcome your fears to help you gain the inspiration you need to awaken your path to joy. Learn the way to life mastery and the enlightened path with Grow Your Soul Radio. For more information on Jane Matanga and her work, visit enlightened-path.com. Welcome back, listeners. Just before the break, we were talking about responsibility. Dorothy, you wanted to mention something about shield, but before you do, I just want to say responsibility, right? The ability to respond. Yeah, I mean, I, I think sometimes there's so much in language that if unless we just pick a word apart, we can really get to its core because, you know, responsibility, if you think about it, is my responsibility, which means I have the ability 
to respond to a situation and it's my choice and and it's on me so yes shield story okay <laughs> so so we i think it's part of that kind of uh socialization that we become independent you know we're just we're in this world uh we're ourselves we don't have to worry about anything else uh, but in fact, we are connected energetically, which means that our energy field affects everybody else. Um, listeners, you've probably heard or thought or read about auras. And in fact, Kirlian photographer can, photography can uh, create a picture of your energy field. And we have a boundary of our energy field if you're ever in a situation where uh, someone that you dislike or a stranger walks up very close to you, you can feel when they intrude on that energy field, on, on your aura. So we have the ability to manage that energetic boundary. And one of the images that I love is uh, the semi-permeable membrane of the cell where we let out the things that uh, that we need to let out that aren't going to be harmful to others, and we take in the things that are helpful to us. If we're in a situation where we feel um, in danger or you know we feel that there is a problematic interaction going on, or I would say, if we're aware that we ourselves are generating all of this negative energy, then we can do something like we can surround ourselves with a diamond, you know, something that's absolutely impenetrable so that the energy will flow out for that negative energy will flow out from us. And if we don't do something about it, it'll just bounce right back on us. And we're the, but we're the only ones that have to deal with it. So, Another thing that we can do is we can create a visualization that will help. So we can create, for example, uh, like a shower of light that comes in and uh, cleanses or dissipates that tangled ener uh, negative energy so that as it moves out from us, it becomes clean and uh, uh, positive uh, towards other people. So there there are a number of ways that we can do it, but the main thing is to remember two two principles. One is it's our energy and we're responsible for polluting if we let negative energy get loose. And the second is that we can manage the boundary of our energy field so that our energy does not in fact have a negative impact on other people. Well one thing I love it does make such sense. And of course, it's leading me to think of something else <laughs> or, or take it just a little bit further, which is, you know, I would say, well, how do we get to the point where we are efficient in its management, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to say, ah, oh, yes, okay, I'm going to put up a shield or I'm going to, you know, really bathe myself in, 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 in the light of what I would say is like my, my innermost, my, you know, the core of my sort of inner being, which is, is not does not hold that vibration of harmlessness or of harm of harm, which is that sort of ugly energy that's coming at you, right? And so it's about alignment, right? I mean, we we really need to learn this alignment, and it is alignment that then sets up a vibration of our truth, you know, that sort of then creates that shield. And that comes down to again, like attraction and resistance. And we see that even on a cellular level level. That, you know, even ourselves have these sort of, uh, they've got, say, there's a shape that looks like an arrowhead. And it's got to have a perfect fit for, you know, a polymer chain or another protein to link to it. Because the law of attraction says like attracts like, you know. And if we create this alignment, then that negative energy just doesn't become a fit for us. And in a sense, it falls away or moves away. And so it's about, it, there's an aspect of really getting to know ourselves and being able to establish that inner alignment, that inner stability, which is really, um, you know, we create that from, from study meditation and service and, and, um, and really getting in touch with the essence of who we are. Would you say so? Well, I, I would agree. I, I'd like to bring it 
down to a more practical level, which I mean, conceptually, I agree with you absolutely, Steve. But my experience is that if we want something to happen automatically, it takes conscious practice for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes reflexive behavior. And most of us, uh, maybe not all of us, but myself, people that I know, have a series of unconscious reflexive behaviors that are, pol that are energetically polluting because we haven't thought about it. We haven't practiced it. And to me, the way that I change something like that is I take – a small part of a day where I'm very conscious of what my energy is and of shifting it, of creating that shield. And I keep doing that long enough to where it just becomes habit. But I would wager you that for many people, it's not a habit right now. To say again, Maybe a I'm habit wrong. to... A habit to... to, to to manage our energy in such a way that we never pollute anyone else. Oh, yeah. And managing that energy is just about getting to know it, right? Which means well, you have to get to know it, but you have to practice the behavior that's yeah, going yeah. To, to create the encapsulation, so to speak, so that you don't spew it out, you know, uh, right. in a way that's harmful to other people. Right, which means you've got to become aware of it first, that it's even there, you know, that it is right. a negative energy and it is affecting other people, right? That's which right. is which is once again this this ability to observe, this ability to become aware. So Dorothy, this is our last segment. We're already at the end. So I just Oh my goodness. Yeah, we, we just have like a minute left. So what I want to um, just bring up is that, you know, we're going to spend this week, May is, is one of these five week months. So it's perfect that we've got four more weeks to talk about interconnectedness, interconnectedness. Uh, but we are going to, this whole year, we're going to cover some really big topics. Uh, Dorothy and I met uh, to make a long story short because she was giving a talk many, a couple years ago at a conference and, and wrote a book about these seven spiritual principles or these seven principles that sort of undergird our, our universe. And we talked about spiritual tools last season for 12 months, each month, a different spiritual tool that somebody can use. And this year we want to talk about these principles. So we're going to really expand upon them. So I would say to listeners, you know, if you want to have a sort of a, almost like a little playbook <laughs> for, for a greater part of this year, we're going to cover for each month, one of these seven principles. So Dorothy, I think we even have less than a minute. You want to just talk about just a second about the book? Okay. So the book is called, Principles of Abundance for the Cosmic Citizen. Um, it goes into it. It is an interweaving of uh, metaphysics, quantum theory, life sciences, all that we know about how we actually operate. And it has scattered through it about uh, 30 or 34 little exercises that you can do for yourself. So if you're interested, please get Principles of Abundance for the Cosmic Citizen by Dorothy Riddle. Mm, nice. And it is, I mean, these principles are, they're just fact. So it is, uh, it is something I look so forward to really diving into for the greater part of this year. And we're going to learn a lot. So Dorothy, we're right at the end. So we've got to go listeners. Thank you so much for tuning into Spirit Fire Radio. Check us out at spiritfireradio.com, school for esoteric studies.net and spiritfire.com. Dorothy, it's been great. I'll see you next week, right? Yep, absolutely. Oh. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, for your weekly guide to purposeful living and practical spirituality. Join hosts Steve Kramer and Dorothy Riddle as they shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in your everyday life. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. To learn more, visit spiritfireradio.com. Thank you.